Thank you so much for joining us. This is Linda. I'm hosting your webinar today. And today's topic is SEO like a pro. In just a moment, I'll introduce you to Zach, who's going to present. These are proven methods that produce results in search engines. I'll start off with our disclaimer. The information provided in this webinar and any supplementary materials provided to registrants are intended for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute professional financial or legal advice. No registrant should act or fail to act on the basis of any material contained in this webinar without obtaining proper financial, legal, and other professional advice specific to their situation. The Northern California Small Business Development Center and its host, the HSU Sponsored Programs Foundation specifically disclaims any liability, loss or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the information presented in this webinar. And before I introduce you to Zach, I wanna let you know that this is the Shasta Cascade SBDC. We are located in far Northern California supporting Shasta and Trinity counties. If you live in that area, you can reach out to an advisor and meet with them directly. And by that, it could be on Zoom, it could be in person. We support the local community. If you're located in the US, there are SBDC locations throughout the country. You can search for, in Google, go to SBDC and search your county name and find the one that supports you. And now I'd like to introduce you to Zach. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, and just so you guys know who you are hearing from, uh, my name is Zach and I am the founder of Barton Interactive. We're a full service web design and marketing agency. Uh, opened our doors officially in uh, January of 2014, uh, but I've been uh, in the industry professionally for almost 18 years now and lead a team of web designers, developers, marketers, uh, etc. that uh, essentially aim to enhance businesses online presence, sometimes offline as well. I've had the privilege of serving clientele such as Eddie Bauer, Wet Seal, Vitamin Shop, T-Mobile, Ely Tahari, Skechers, uh, Bethel if you're in the Reading area, and, um, and many more, but not only large size businesses, but a lot of medium and small size businesses as well. And this is the slide that Linda just ran through. <laughs> Sorry, Linda. Uh, so let's, let's go over our agenda, just so you guys know what you're in for. Uh, I would say buckle up because we're going to, we have a lot of content here. We're going to be moving pretty quickly to try to get through it. But at the same time, um, we really want you guys to get everything out of it that you came for. So if you have a question, uh, Linda, what do you want them to do? You want them to enter it in the, uh, send you a message, enter it in chat. Yes, put it right in the chat. And then Zach, I'll wait for certain pauses for you. Unless it's something that really needs to be discussed in the moment, I'll wait because I know you have a lot to cover and I don't want to break your flow. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks so much. Yeah, Linda's terrific. Uh, we've done a handful of these together. And uh, so I'm going to rely on her discretion as to what, when to interrupt and when not to. Um, as she mentioned, this is a pretty meaty um, webinar. And so we want to try to make sure we get through it. We also don't want to miss any questions. So if you have one, don't be shy, throw one out there. Uh, it might be that uh, several other people have that same exact question and we'll try to get to it. And uh, if there aren't tons of questions, we can keep this a little bit more conversational. Um, but uh, if that starts to slow us down too much, we'll probably more get back into uh, saving those for, you know, a couple of designated spots during the webinar. But Getting back to our agenda here, um, we're going to say, hey, what the heck, what is SEO anyway? What is local SEO? And uh, we're, we'll define those. We're going to give some local SEO recommendations. And then we're going to share some recommendations regarding SEO that go beyond local. Okay, so whether that's national or international, uh, afterwards we'll wrap up and uh, cover any final questions. So, um, the objective would be that by the end of this presentation that you would have enough of a basic understanding of SEO and local SEO to help improve your website's search visibility and traffic. 
So we're gonna go over 15 actionable practical steps that you can implement. I'd say no matter where you're at on your SEO journey. Um, and I'm kind of full of cheesy metaphors. I'm a dad, it's one of my superpowers. I always picture like a, a Candyland board game where there's 15 tiles and it's, it's almost like, okay, whether you're on the first one or the sixth one or the 15th one, you're probably gonna be able to get some, uh, some good actionable takeaways from this. But just so we're starting with the basics here, what, what is SEO anyway? So it stands for search engine optimization, and it's the process of increasing the quality and quantity of the traffic to your website by increasing the visibility of your website or particular web page uh, to users of a search engine, you know, Google, Yahoo, Bing, et cetera. So now what is local SEO? So uh, local SEO is about increasing the search visibility for businesses that have uh, that serve their communities face to face. So it might be a, a brick and mortar business with physical locations like a grocery store or a dentist's office um, or service area businesses that operate through a certain geographic area like an electrician or a house cleaning company. So you guys are probably, I, I know in Reading driving around, you see the, um, like a cleaning made car driving around and they might not have a storefront somewhere and that's okay. They can still be on um, you know, local search with Google and, and Bing and Yahoo Local and things like that. Um, so this could, uh, the local SEO that includes things like claiming a business, um, ensuring the location or locations appear um, on, on Google and, and other search engines um, managing, you know, citations and, uh, extending, uh, management of online ratings and reviews, uh, you know, working on social media engagement and beyond, but that, that stuff is included in local SEO and we'll dive into that a bit more. So hopefully you're not coming into this webinar looking like this guy, um, are you saying, yeah, if you could make us number one on Google over the weekend, that'd be great. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, I've been in SEO for years and uh, I do come across people like this. Uh, if you are one, uh, we, we won't call you out, but um, it's, it is very rare um, to become no, number one on something overnight. I would say, especially something that is um, getting a lot of searches on, on Google or other search engines. It's possible and I've, I've definitely heard of it. And I think I've even seen it but that's usually not with super, super high volume searches. But what we can do though is say, hey, here, here's what it takes to climb in those rankings. And here are some things that you could be doing. Um, which, which of those things have you done already and which ones have you not done? And here are some um, tips to help you along your way to, to start climbing, okay? But let's talk about local SEO first. So let's say you're just, you're, you're just getting set up or you're wanting to, um, you're really wanting to focus on local search. And that's a great idea, um, especially with now that a few years ago, the local search pack shows up when you do a search for something. Let's say I, I search for um, uh, pizza near me or something like that on Google. And instead of showing all these just basic plain old search results, now there's this, the, the local snack pack as, they, as some people call it at the top or the local search pack and you see, hey, these are the local restaurants. They have reviews, they have ratings. Boy, some people don't just don't even leave that page. They already have what they need. They're off to the races. Um, so with, with that there, boy, now everybody's like, well, how do I get into that lo local search pack? How do, I, how do I climb past other people in that local search pack? So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, so our local listings set up. So if you're, if you're not even in there in the first place, uh, that's obviously where, where you're going to want to start um, with search engines, local search results being more important than ever. Local SEO is something to take seriously. Absolutely. Uh, and you can do that by setting up local profiles on Google My Business, Yahoo Local, and Bing Places. Now, one little asterisk I would add to this, um, as I was telling Linda right before we started, that Google makes um, thousands of changes a year, so it, it is um, it is an ongoing challenge to stay on top of that, or at least the mo most important stuff. 
but one of them is, um, and this is actually not with Google, but with, with Yahoo. Now Yahoo Local is, uh, is slightly different. Now this is a paid feature. So th yeah, that's a great thing to consider, but Bing Places and Google My Business are still free. Yahoo Local is still great to get into, but you can get set up on those three things, even if you don't have a physical location, okay? A few years ago, you had to have a storefront somewhere. You had to have some kind of business address uh, that was going to be public facing. That is no longer an issue. Now, they want to make sure that you have some kind of address that at least they know about privately, um, but you don't have to have a storefront somewhere. Here's a quick screenshot of what it might look like if you were to look for Butcher. Uh, maybe, you know, 10 years ago, you would just be seeing search results here that, you know, the standard old school uh, text search results, but here now we're seeing, um, boy, we're seeing the map, we're seeing the local listings and their reviews and ratings and everything. Okay, so maybe you've moved past step one. If not, you know, obviously jot that down or we can share the slides after. But uh, second would be, hey, now that you're on, on those, well, hey, if there's 20 local butchers, you don't want to be ranked 20th, right? <laughs> that would be a real bummer because a lot of people still aren't gonna see you unless you're near the top of that pack. So, um, so we wanna optimize your local listings. You wanna, we wanna make sure that you're climbing past your competitors uh, and we want you to be looking good when people do find you, right? Because if they find you and you're not looking good in there, well, that's, that's probably not gonna help you a ton. They, you're not gonna get as many clicks, right? So you wanna be sure that your listings include, um, you know, obviously your business name, address, contact information, uh, the category, hours of business, um, you know, make sure you're on the map, make sure you have photos. If you can get video in there, um, introduction, keywords, those kind of things. Like you don't want to fill, you don't want to leave uh, the fields blank, right? You don't want to be this listing on the left. You can see poor listing example. Um, this is so, this is very outdated, but we came up with this a few years ago. But yeah, you don't want to have the wrong address, wrong phone number, uh, unclaimed, no business hours. You want to have this stuff filled out. You want to get good reviews and good ratings. Make sure you have a picture of your storefront, all that kind of stuff. If you if you have a storefront, that is. Or let's say you're just a cleaning company. You know, get a shot of one of your team uh, cleaning something, or your team, you know, a group photo or something like that. Um, so. I made a mistake on this, uh, please forgive me, but annotations should say citations. So C-I-T-A-T-I-O-N-S. So are you getting client reviews and citations? So there are local search ranking factors and these are a couple of the most important ones. A couple other ones are things like proximity. So if I'm, certain, if I'm in um, New York City and I'm searching for a local pizza place, Obviously, it's not going to show me a pizza place in Texas, right? It just makes sense. So proximity is a factor. Um, the, the number of client ratings and reviews is a factor. And the number of, I should say, citations um, is also a factor. Studies have shown that that may be the most important uh, local search ranking factor nowadays. And what a citation is, is a listing of uh, your business name and address on other websites. So if you're familiar with SEO and, uh, and backlinks, which you might not, uh, but those are links from other sites back to yours, this is kind of like the backlink of the local SEO world. Uh, you do want other websites mentioning your business, not only that, but mentioning your local business address. And that is a signal for Google and they might say, oh, Hey, look at that. Um, Sally's got uh, six uh, other websites pointing back to her business, mentioning her address. She, she must be pretty significant. Oh, wait, Jennifer's got with her business. She has 20 other websites pointing back to her address. Wait, let's rank her a little bit higher. So obviously they're not sitting back there having those kind of conversations. <laughs> That's being done programmatically, automatically. But, um, but boy, those are really things to, to take serious if you're working on local SEO. Now, Linda, feel free to pause me before I get into our, our little example here. Um, are we doing okay? Do you have a question in chat or? I have one question in the chat, but they said it's fine with waiting till later on. It's kind of a general question. Sounds good. So we'll move on with some examples and we'll keep this brief because I think people are, people are probably uh, 
you're, you're probably tracking with me when I show you this. So let's just compare a couple burger joints. So let's pretend that, uh, and we have a lot of internationals in Reading. Let's say I'm from Indonesia. I'm, I'm here. Um, I'm just going to be in the States for a week or two. I'm in Reading. I've never had an American cheeseburger before. I want one right now. <laughs> but I don't have a concierge. I don't have someone um, showing me around and saying, hey, you should go to this place or that place. So I turn to Google and I open it up and, and pardon these screenshots, they are um, a year or two old, we've been using them for a while, but, uh, but they're still very relevant. So I open up Google and I search for, uh, we'll just pretend that I searched for cheeseburger here. And so I, I start clicking through the local searches, the local uh, search results, and I see In-N-Out Burger. Okay, this is close enough and it's uh, got 4.6 stars and, you know, almost 4,000 reviews. And then what are the other couple most, you know, a couple highest ones? Well, we have five guys and that has 4.3 stars with uh, a little under 500 reviews. And then last we have, uh, let's say I'm just, just considering the top three. And uh, we see the Habit Burger and they have 4.5 stars and a little over a thousand reviews. So just to see if you guys are awake, uh, which one do you think I would pick if I was just going on, on what I'm seeing in Google and the local search results here? And I would love for you to, to chime into the chat box with your answer if you haven't already. Nothing in the chat yet. Okay, I'm getting a few direct messages. Okay. Um, but, uh, okay, good. In, in, the chat, we can, in the chat, we can only direct message you or Linda. We can't do it to everyone. Thank you so much for saying that. Yes, um, we know that. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. Oh, good. Okay, so, um, so yeah, here we go. So thanks for sharing that. And uh, so... So, and thanks for chiming in here. So in and out, in and out, in and out. Someone put habit, but there, but there's kind of a question, question mark there. Um, and, uh, and so that is, oops, here we go. Let's go back. And so those are great. Thanks for chiming in. Absolutely. Um, if I was going on this, well, the habit doesn't have um, as many reviews and it doesn't have as many stars as in and out. And so unless I, unless I was told something else by a friend, I would probably go with in and out right? So if you are a local shoe company or cleaning service or wherever you are, yeah, those, those actually do matter. And, uh, you know, where, wherever you show up, whether you're ranked number one, two, three, or 10, boy, that's going to give you a little bit of an advantage um, over the others in there if you do have more reviews and more ratings. So I like to tell people, hey, if you can, aim for one, one a week or one a month. I mean, really... I don't even want to say that because it depends on how many your competitors have, but check to see how many your competitors have and, you know, do, do some math and see, you know, do you need to get another review every day to catch up and, and pass them up? Um, or do you, is, are you going to be good with just once a week? Um, I know that if I were having a conversation with Habit Burger, I would say, hey guys, at this rate, um, we, we probably want to aim for a few a day at this point, if we're gonna stay in the running here. Or five guys, I would say, let's let's try to get every single customer. Let's see what we can offer them that's not breaking, uh, violating Google's terms of service um, that would get us some more ratings and reviews because we don't, we don't wanna just uh, become irrelevant, right? Okay, um, moving on. Before I move on, I think I did have one other question. And I think it was a, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, I did have one other question from Lisa. Um, what if I have products set up in a business uh, that have multiple merchants, but don't have my own store? Um, I, I think that you would still be able to have your business in uh, Google My Business. So in other words, have it set up as a local business. Although um, I usually tell people that in search engines, unless you are a, a brand or have a product or service that people know to search for, it's going to be hard for them to find you. Unlike with um, 
digital advertising, especially social media advertising, if that makes sense, Lisa. So not impossible, but there could potentially be challenges there if people don't know to search for you. So, uh, but if you have any other follow-up questions on that, Lisa, feel free to uh, throw them in the chat. And if you could try to send your direct messages to Linda since she's hosting and it would help me out a little bit, guys. Um, but thanks so much for, for throwing those questions and comments in there already. So number four, um, and so this is local and beyond. You're gonna see, see this text up here change a little bit. This is gonna help you locally. This is also gonna help you beyond locally. Um, are you getting links from others back to your website locally? Now, this is mattering more and more lately. Um, so if you can get links back to your website, not just from Facebook, not just from Twitter or Instagram or whatever, um, but from other actual local businesses and or organizations, um, and that's going to help you out quite a bit, both locally and beyond locally. Um, you can check to see where your competitors are listed around the web as well. There are certain tools that you can uh, use to do that. I, I call that a competitive analysis. And when you can find what websites are linking back to your competitors, well, then you can aim to get your business listed with those same other websites also. So that is a, a great way to earn what we call backlinks, you know, links back to your website. And backlinks, I'm gonna cover this more in a minute, but they're a huge factor. They're actually, uh, the uh, studies show the number one correlating factor um, in terms of uh, where to show your search result in search engines. It's not the only ranking factor, but studies have shown that it's the number one ranking factor. So in other words, if your website has 50 other websites pointing back to it with links saying, hey, check this website out. Um, and then the next website over, they have three of those backlinks. Um, wait, which one is Google gonna wanna say is more important? It's, you know, I hate the whole popularity contest um, thought, but I, honestly, you know, Google has to look for certain signals and that is, um, studies have shown that that's the most important one. So link, link building is huge. So if there are local businesses and organizations that could help you locally, that's also going to help you beyond locally. Um, that's a great SEO strategy. You just start trying to get legit uh, quality backlinks uh, from, from trusted websites back to yours. Not, not junky ones, not spammy ones. Don't pay for backlinks. Um, but that is that would help you climb past your competitors in the search engine results pages. Okay. Now I'm going to take a breath there. Um, Linda, no, I think we were talking a little bit about this earlier. You know, you know, Google has kind of changed things. Um, actually, one month ago, they changed uh, what what qualifies as a good back backlink versus not a good backlink anymore, and that really <laughs> was a major curveball in the SEO world. It happened one month ago. Um, let me know if you get any questions about that or think that I should dive into that at all. If not, I'll just keep moving. But. Zach, let's, um, let's have you move through and all the questions are queuing up and some of them you may answer as you present. It's just that you have so much to cover. Sure. I want everyone to hear your core training before we go out on these little side conversations. Definitely. Great idea. Thanks for keeping me on track, Linda. Okay, so now let's just get beyond local SEO. So we were just talking local SEO there for those uh, what, three, four, however many recommendations there were there. Now the rest of these are just beyond local. So it could be, um, you know, in your state, in your, your area, um, nationally, uh, internationally. Yes, all of this will help you with, with those things. Okay. Um, so recommendation number five. So have you read Google's SEO starter guide? Yes, it exists. Yes, it's free. Um, they're going to teach you things like creating unique, accurate page titles. Uh, what is that? Why is it important? Um, you know, creating uh, quality snip, uh, they, they would create good titles and snippets in the search results, um, how to use the description tag and how that feeds into there, um, how to use heading tags to emphasize more important text and how to, you know, do things like adding structured data markup to your pages. Um, so to some of you, this is kind of snooze fest. This is really beginner stuff. And to others, this may seem like rocket science. 
Um, but this is a gr good way if you're going to be jumping into SEO, hey, get the basics down and, and you know, get it from Google. That's a really, really solid uh, first move there. Um, so recommendation number six would be, do you have a separate page for every product or service you offer? You know, it's very common for me to come across websites or, you know, we get asked uh, to build websites that are, you know, just a few pages. And that's great. It makes sense to start off that way. But then, you know, that that's only so many pages that can be found in the search engines, right? So if you have a website that has several pages, you know, a page for every product or a, a, a web page for every service that you offer, that's a great way to get more exposure on the search engines. Uh, additionally, and I'm gonna get into this a little bit more soon, maybe you have those pages, but they're really thin or really light. Um, and those terms basically mean there's hardly any content on them. Hey, if you can beef up that content, and sometimes that, that can be called a, a skyscraper page where you can really make it make that page stand tall above the other competitors that are, you know, other websites that have similar pages, that is also a great way to earn more traffic. It's going to help you outdo your competition, not only in the search engine's eyes, but also in the eyes of just you know, regular human beings that are visiting your website. So right along those, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, just to kind of piggyback on that. Having long form um, pages would be something to go for. So let's say you, okay, you're like, okay, I did number six. I have a page for every service that we offer. We offer six services or we offer 12, so whatever. We have, maybe we have a thousand products. Now we have, we have a product page for every single one of them. Great, but if they're thin, we wanna try to beef those up. So I'm kind of merging six and seven here. Sorry about that. But yeah, aim, aim for at least 500 words. Try to add more to it. And some of you might be saying, well, how, how do I do that? I don't want to just dump 500 words. I don't know what to write. Well, maybe you can add an FAQs section, um, or maybe you can add helpful tips, or maybe you can add customer reviews, because all of those things count towards that word count. And studies have shown um, that, boy, that is another, uh, it's either another ranking factor, or it's a huge coincidence that the top performing pages most of the time are bigger, meatier pages in comparison, uh, in comparison to the pages that they're surpassing in the search engines. Um, other couple ideas would be, you know, if you're wanting to beef up pages, check your hard drive for content, or nowadays check your Google Drive <laughs> or Google Docs. Um, check emails that you've sent, uh, FAQs, you know, nowadays texts, uh, proposals, presentations. You know, I, I like to say look at what questions people are asking because a lot of other people probably have those same questions and those are great things that can be added onto your web page. Again, think about this skyscraper approach and why do we call it that? Uh, not that we coined that term, but a skyscraper page, we would say, um, you know, if you look at a, you know, a downtown skyline, like look at Sacramento, like what's the tallest building there? And is that where your eyes go? Yeah, your eyes are looking at the biggest buildings there. Well, you wanna do the same thing with your, your website, right? You want your, your posts and your pages to be really high quality content. Uh, maybe they do have the most words or maybe they don't, but they have a really spiffy video in them or things like that. Lots of really nice photos, uh, really high quality writing. So that's gonna be really good in the eyes of search engines and humans. And beyond that, it's like, okay, well, are the pages on your website optimized? And some of you are probably saying, well, what does that even mean? So there are different ways to optimize a web page. You know, you can optimize it for, for speed, and we'll, we'll talk about speed in a little bit too. You know, I mean, actual load time. Um, but in terms of keywords, like implementing keywords and doing that properly, uh, that's what we mean by optimized right here. And we're not saying, hey, if you have a 3,000 page website that every single one of them, you know, you need to optimize every single one of those. No, that's that's probably a little far-fetched. Um, it, it probably doesn't make sense to do that um, because what you would get out of that is probably not as good as what you put into that. But I would say, hey, at least on your homepage and your main pages at a minimum, consider um, optimizing those with keywords. And that's that would be a whole nother webinar to, to get into SEO keyword research. If you have questions on that, we can chat about that, but consider doing keyword research on at least your most important pages and optimizing them. Uh, you, you know, contrary to popular belief, you don't optimize the whole website all in one shot. You don't uh, 
uh, we get to ask this, I feel like almost every month, um, but you can't just do keyword research once for the whole website and then you're done. It's no, it's really page by page. Why is that? That's because websites don't show, uh, excuse me, Google doesn't show websites in the search results. They show web pages. So you want each of those pages to be optimized, right? So you have, if you have more questions on that, we'll, we'll try to circle back. But honestly, we could talk about that for an hour and a half right there. So we'll keep moving for now at least. And we'll just pretend that this is a slide of someone coming up with keyword research. <laughs> it was definitely, uh, it's definitely not that, but we'll just pretend that that's what that is. Okay, do you have many external websites linking back to your website? This kind of goes back to the backlink thing, um, but now we're saying, before we were saying, hey, get local websites, uh, you know, local businesses and organizations to link back to you. There's different ways to do that. Uh, one way would be, you know, Maybe you're sponsoring a, a local nonprofit or something like that. And, and in exchange, they happen to say, okay, well, uh, we, we link back to our sponsors or something along those lines. Um, but not only like with local businesses and organizations, you know, there are only so many of those to go around pretty soon. If you're going to be taking this seriously, you kind of have to look beyond local and just say, okay, well, what, what other websites can we get to link back to ours? And as I mentioned, backlinks are very important when it comes to telling search engines how important your website is. So yeah, you can go for some quick wins, um, but it, it's a little bit more complicated than just getting any website to link to you. Um, if that was the case, um, you know, things would be quite different. Things were like that for a while uh, at the beginning. Any website was just trying to get any other website to link back to them until Google said, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> this is faulty, this isn't going to work. So they started introducing a few uh, checks and things to try to uh, stop people from abusing that and uh, to try to build, you know, they want to keep their search engine results as high quality as possible. So they have things called like, like the no follow rule, for example, that will help them with that. I'm going to, yeah, and here's a funny meme that I dropped in. Uh, you know, this is someone who spent years building, uh, you know, PR links, and they never checked to see if they were no follow links. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you want to know, feel free to drop a question in the chat, but I'm not going to camp out on the whole no follow thing unless, uh, unless that is something that people really want to know and don't know, but essentially, it's a little tag that you can put in a link that tells search engines uh, to ignore that link. For example, if I have a, a blog on shoes and I link to the Nike website and I have a little no follow uh, parameter in, in that link, Google's not going to go, oh, we're going to count that as a backlink to the Nike website. No, it's they're going to go, oh, we see that, but we're going to ignore it. We're not going to pass that link equity on. Um, let's see here. This is quite important. So I am going to mention this with, with backlinks. Again, backlinks are links from other sites that point back to yours. And yes, they are the number one correlating rank, ranking factor studies show. Um, but it's really important that you, you focus on uh, quality more than quantity here. So Google, they do have terms of service. And yes, if you are a hardcore violator, um, you can get penalized. Yes, I've seen it. And yes, it can get really ugly. Um, so it's, uh, it's called Black Hat SEO would, would be the term uh, that would be used um, for things that are shady, you know, shady, what you're getting shady websites to link back to yours, you're paying for backlinks. Um, and no, I'm not talking about becoming a sponsor of some kind of nonprofit. I'm, I'm talking about uh, you get an email from someone uh, in another country, perhaps, or even our own, and it says, hey, you know, give us $100 and we'll give you 1,000 backlinks. That kind of stuff is not going to look good to Google. Um, so yes, uh, anything like that would be called um, Black Hat SEO. It would fall under the Black Hat category. And essentially, it's... Um, things that you're trying to do to improve your SEO that really bend or completely break the rules that Google has set, set down. Um, I, this used to be real popular. I'm sure it still is, but I haven't 
personally seen people attempting it recently, but uh, boy, 10, 15 years ago, it was all the time I was seeing uh, even our own clients would be trying to duplicate content from one website, just plop it right on their own website. It, and yeah, no, that's, that's really, it doesn't look good to Google and you really don't want to get those kind of penalties. I'm going to pause there, Linda, because I need to take a breath and drink some water, but do we have any relevant questions that make sense to uh, insert here and now? Um, sure. Let me, let me go back. We have quite a few. Um, let me ask you this one. I had a question for the, the question was, you know, you could address it later on, but is it better for SEO to have reviews on your website or on your Google business page? Yes, <laughs> I would say both. Now, reviews on your website can be helpful regarding SEO in terms of having more keywords on your page and more a higher word count and, and higher quality uh, a higher quality page, but it shouldn't be like a teeter totter where one's strong and the other's weak. I would say, you know, if you can aim for both, absolutely. Does it matter what website the backlink is on? Yes. Um, so Google is um, getting more and more strict with this. And we actually had to update this presentation because. Um, honestly, Google's updating things, you know, thousands of times every year. And one of the biggest things that they updated re recently was almost one month ago, exactly from today. And that was, they basically said, here's what qualifies as a quality backlink. Here's what no longer qualifies as a back, uh, quality backlink. And so they said, uh, you know, these things over here, if it's a, a backlink scheme, if you're doing, you know, you know, just straight up intentionally violating our terms of service, then yes, you can get penalized for that. No, you're not gonna get a fine in the mail or anything like that, but they can just totally wipe you off of their search engine. That's not a good thing. Uh, I've seen it happen, they really do it. And uh, it's, it's definitely real. Um, but what they also said was, if you're in, in getting this category of backlinks, and I can name a couple of examples, but they basically said, uh, it's not that we're going to penalize you, but we're just not going to count them as, you know, toward your um, backlink profile, if you will. Um, we're not going to we're not going to give you credit for those, in other words. And so um, I would say with the biggest uh, couple examples that would fall into that category, it's not black hat, but Google is just saying like, hey, we're officially not giving you any credit for these. Um, would be backlinks that are. You know, you hopped on some forum and left a comment that has a link to your website. Um, another one would be just finding a directory. And, and it's like, well, let's say you have a shoe store and it's like, you know, list of every shoe store in the world.com or whatever. And, and it's just like some giant list website. And you're like, ooh, free backlink. It only takes me 10 seconds. Well, that's great, but that's no longer going to help you. You're not going to get penalized for that, but those direct easy uh, links, those directory links, those are no longer counting. And so we are seeing this uh, algorithm change impact the amount of direct traffic companies are getting big time right now. So and I'm going to squeeze one more question because I think it'll be relevant to how you talk about the rest of it is what if I have products set up in a business that has multiple merchants, such as Gather Downtown, but don't have my own store? Oh, I think I addressed that one. Yeah, at the, at the beginning. So if that's in regards to uh, local SEO, yes, you can set up, get yourself set up on Google My Business. So literally open up Google and search for Google My Business, set up an account and you can get in there. Uh, the only caution I had uh, along with that was while you can do that, and yes, that's free, um, people may or may not know to search for you unless you have a, a business name or product or service that people are searching search engines for. And so if you're, and you might not be in this situation, but if you're just getting going and you don't have um, a brand name that people know and you don't have a product or service that they, they know to look for, then I'd, I don't know that I would put all of my eggs in the SEO basket. I would probably put them in the uh, marketing and advertising basket instead, if that makes sense, but. Okay, I'll let you jump back in. Sure, I know we could just kind of just keep chatting. 
Um, if we have time, we'll just, we'll hit more questions and stuff like that, guys, okay? So number 10, does your website load faster than your competitors? Now, some of these will be able to go through pretty quickly like this one. So you can, um, you can literally for free, open up Google and type in Google PageSpeed Insights and run a test. Uh, and you can test your website. I would start with your homepage and, um, and you can see a very thorough breakdown of, you know, is your, is your website fast in the eyes of Google? Is it acceptable or is it unacceptable? And what are the issues if there are any? And uh, this is one of those um, proven Google ranking factors. They've come out and said it like, hey guys, we are, this is part of our, uh, part of how we gauge um, where to prioritize you in the uh, search engine results pages. So yes, it, it does matter a lot. And uh, <laughs> this, this one kind of goes with the next one. Uh, I like how your website is impossible to use on my phone. I think this is less and less of a factor nowadays. Um, but yeah, is your website mobile friendly? Uh, you can, it, nowadays, a lot of people aren't really setting up mobile sites, although apps, you know, of course, are, are huge, but make sure your website's responsive. You know, we're, we're almost in 2022, so your website should be mobile friendly at this point because more than 50% of um, website traffic is on, you know, generally speaking, is on, it's coming from mobile devices. So yeah, that should be kind of your, your default. Okay, or, or at least not uh, take a back seat to desktop. Okay, uh, so just like keeping page load times down, this is now a huge factor, ranking factor in SEO. And Google ha Google's very been very vocal about this. Uh, it was last year, I believe, that they said, hey, not only is this important to us, but when our when we go out and when we're crawling websites and gathering information, we're now going to be doing that from a mobile device to make sure that your website's mobile friendly. And if it's not, then, you know, that's not going to be good for you. So yeah, hugely important. And there's just a quick, um, <laughs> a quick stock photo of someone using a mobile friendly website. Okay. So is your website safe and secure? Um, I, I would say, most websites that I visit are, but sometimes I'll be working with somebody and they didn't know that they should have a secure website. And, you know, I'm not shaming them at all. How, how are you supposed to know that? You just, you're not born knowing that. But if you have a website and you don't already, just make sure you have something called an SSL certificate. And I'm not gonna go into the weeds of what that even means, but just know that it's probably free depending on what hosting you have. If not, it's probably not too much money. You can have your website hosting company set that up for you and it'll give you this, uh, it won't give you the smiley face, no, uh, but it'll give you this, the little you know, green padlock um, and instead of you know, some kind of warning. <clears throat> now this is important. Not only is it another ranking factor that Google said, hey, yes, this is a ranking factor, uh, in addition to that, hey, this just doesn't look good to human beings, right? So if you go to a website and all of a sudden you're getting something on your browser that says not secure, are you going to be like, ooh, let me let me dig around here? <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, so yeah, it's not good for search engines or for human beings. Um, okay, so we only have uh, 13, 14, so three recommendations left. I'm going to pause and take a breath here. But this one... Do you have a blog set up? So we're not saying that everybody has to have a blog. Uh, no, you can have, you can be doing amazing in search engines and not have a blog, absolutely. But at least consider setting one up if you haven't already. Um, you can check competitors' blogs for ideas. You can, you can even step outside of your industry and look at other blogs for ideas. Um, but you want to try to get nice blog posts out on a fairly regular basis. This is going to be good for multiple reasons. Now for in the in the marketing world, this is really nice. So this is two birds with one stone. One would be, you know, regular online marketing, the other one would be SEO. With online marketing, this is going to be wonderful because you are you're going to be able to if you have an email list 
hey, well, you just came out with a new article. Cool, you get to send it out to your email list. You might even send that out a couple times. Um, that's, that's also great for your, your website, but you can even push it onto your social media. Let's say you have Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn or whatever else you have. Cool, you can now, you have a new blog post out. Now you can put it on there. That gives you something to post. That gives you a reason to get your, your, your mailing list people and your, uh, your social media uh, audience gives them a reason to click to go to your website. So that's just regular online marketing. That's good stuff. From the SEO perspective, not only is that giving you hopefully a, a quality new blog post that Google can find, but it's also great if you have, if it's really high quality, hopefully human beings are going to share it too, right? So let's say I go to a website and it's an article on uh, selling something on, selling stuff on eBay and it's just not helpful at all. Am I going to share that? Yeah, probably not. Um, but let's say I go there and I go, oh my gosh, this is so helpful. This is wonderful. And my sister asked me the same question. You know, I'm going to send her this article too really quick. She'll, she'll find that helpful. Now, this is just a quick example, but hey, I just shared this website because I thought their, their article was really great. So for multiple reasons, yes, this is a good thing. And almost any, probably any SEO professional would tell you, um, this is a great thing if you can. It does, doesn't mean you have to, but consider it. Now, I guess the only, uh, so there's several pros that I mentioned there, but the cons in the cons column would be, yeah, it's a lot of work. You know, either you uh, or one of your employees or a contractor or, or a third party is going to have to write an article. And yes, that's going to take time. It might take money. Um, so obviously count the cost before just blindly diving into this. But generally speaking, it, it can be a great move. Uh, in SEO, if you've already done steps one through 12, hey, here we go. Here's a, here's a good one for you to consider, okay? And if you're going to do that, again, going back to the keyword thing, we do recommend writing keyword-rich articles on topics that your customers are actually going to care about rather than just something that you happen to love. Um, I went to design school uh, in you know college, and I, I love things like color theory, uh, that doesn't mean everybody else does. <laughs> so years ago, this is kind of embarrassing, but years ago, I, I thought, oh man, nobody else has a great article on the color psychology of the color orange or blue or green. So I was actually, I made it my mission to come out with one for every single color. I'm like, this is going to be great SEO. Well, that when I started putting in gobs and gobs and gobs of hours and realized, well, none of our current customers actually care about <laughs> <laughs> I realized this is no longer the highest thing in my priority list. Would it be cool if we had that? Yeah, maybe. Um, but that's not really helping us right now. Instead, uh, we found it's way more helpful to focus on writing articles on things that our customers actually care about. What, what are they asking about us, asking us about over and over again? Uh, those are great topics, um, especially if others haven't already written them and written them well. And yeah, go for a skyscraper uh, content if you can. Okay, this is somebody writing an article there. Obviously, a huge WordPress fan. They have a WordPress shirt on. Look at that. And, uh, and if you don't know what to blog about, just really quick, I don't think there will be a huge need to, to harp on this. But, um, you know, if you're marketing to, uh, well, really businesses or individuals, you know, you can do um, a newsletter type post, seasonal buying guides, how-to articles, these are just a bunch of ideas for you if you're just jumping into this, but uh, local interests, top 10 articles, these are great. Um, product reviews, um, service reviews, service comparisons, just a couple other ones, upcoming events, ways to use kind of articles, um, screen capture videos, product videos, uh, predictions and forecasting articles, FAQs, infographics, common mistakes, um, although I wouldn't go uh, slamming anybody or anything like that on that one, of course, but, and then product or service comparisons, if I didn't already say that, case studies are awesome and that can help your business. Um, checklists of content, those are all great places to start. Okay, second to last one. I'm gonna pause, Linda. Do we have any questions in the queue at the moment that are relevant to drop in at the second or not so much? Um, we have a bunch, but um, I'll let you keep going and we'll okay. get them later. Sure. Okay. 
Second to last one, do you use video extensively throughout your website? Um, if not, consider setting up kind of like the blog post. Now consider, we're not saying just go do it because you, know, you got to count the cost before you just go diving into this kind of thing. You don't want to have um, a blog or a YouTube or Vimeo channel that has like one thing on it, right? That's kind of, it's just not a good look. Like, oh, well, clearly anybody that, that comes, they go clearly, they try to do it and they just get, gave up on it. That's just not a good look. But um, so consider, you know, getting things in motion where you can have a team doing this for you, or if you just happen to have a bunch of extra time or love something that much um, that it's not going to be draining to you, great. Um, those are things to consider, a, a YouTube or a Vimeo channel. Um, if you're happy to appear on camera, great. Um, you know, you can do things like whiteboard presentations, uh, product or service descriptions. You can do headshot or interview style videos, um, talking through FAQs, talk through hints or tips. If you're one of the many people who just doesn't want to be on camera, but you still want to be on YouTube or Vimeo, you could always do things like um, before and after examples, uh, talking slides, um, cartoons. No, I don't have any. Uh, I always get asked, well, what company do you recommend? I, I actually, I don't have one. I haven't done that, but they're around. Um, or screen capture videos, those are great too. Um, there are videos where it's just a picture of someone's face in the corner, just a really nice business shot. And then you're, they're just showing you, um, uh, you know, screen captures or, or video the whole time. And it, it doesn't look bad. Just something to consider. And if you're going to go that route, yes, you can optimize your videos for SEO. Yes, that's a thing. Um, you know, keywords with video, not going to, not going to get into this extensively, especially here and now, but, um, but yes, Keywords do matter for videos, and there is a way to do SEO keyword research just for YouTube. Um, yes, you do want to have keyword re keyword rich title and meta tags in YouTube. Um, I recommend transcribing your videos or having it done automatically. Nowadays, uh, YouTube does this, I think, pretty well. But a few years ago, I don't think I would say that. And uh, you know that kind of technology is getting better and better nowadays. Or I would I would say a few years ago, like you need to transcribe it yourself. It only take you an extra forty five minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, that's actually a lot of time if you're as busy as I am. And uh, nowadays, hey, if you can get that done for free, that's even better. But but yeah, there we do have a lot of visually impaired uh, or hearing impaired friends out there. And so let's not forget about those guys. Not to mention that's great for SEO, right? Um, but uh, you know. Another great thing, I love doing this, creating a blog post with the video embedded and then have it transcribed below the video. I mean, that's to me, that's a lot of times is going to get you skyscraper level uh, blog posts that, that also happen to be uh, pulling in social media. That's just fantastic. So just a tip there. Um, and then, yeah, optimize your blog posts. Of course, you know, if you're going to do that, optimize the blog post title tag, the meta description, the headings, et cetera. And again, I'm talking about um, SEO keyword research there. And no, we're not doing a full-blown SEO keyword research webinar right now, but perhaps we'll do one soon if you guys want. So. Um, so last tip would be, so number 15, somehow, hopefully you're still awake. And this would be, if you've done all these other things, and you don't have to do them in this order, but I would, you know, we have, some of them are a lot more important than others. You obviously don't want to jump into something like this if you haven't already done the basics, right? Um, so if you've already done the basics, you might not be doing this yet, definitely something to consider. Are you using schema to stand out in the search engine results pages? Uh, so schema, what the heck is that? What are you even talking about? So schema is a semantic vocabulary of tags that you can add to your, your the code of your website, HTML, to improve the way search engines read and represent your page in the search engine results page. So um, in other words, to, to say that without sounding like I'm speaking Greek, it's a little snippet of information that you can add to each of your web pages to help you stand out in the search engines. Okay, and I'm gonna show you some examples. It's really cool. If you're not already doing this, you'll probably be really excited about it. So um, this does, obviously, it's another one of those things that requires an extra step. And so, yeah, count the cost before you do it because it, you know, it, it does take a little bit of extra time when you're creating content, but it's known to be well worth the effort and can potentially allow you to stand out from super crowded search engine results pages 
um, as seen in the following examples. So, um, so let's say I search for chicken tikka masala. Okay, my wife loves Indian, so we eat it fairly often. And let's say she's looking for a recipe for it. Now, so let's say she searches for a chicken tikka masala recipe. She wants to make it at home. She wants to find a great new recipe because last time she made it, she thought, hey, I want to try a different one next time. So she, she searches for it, make believe, and she sees these two results at the top. What makes these different from your average search result? Well, they have really cool looking photos next to them. They have ratings and reviews. They tell you the amount of time it's going to take. Wow, this one's going to take 12 hours. I don't have time for that, you know, or maybe she does. Um, how many calories? I mean, wow, that's really helpful information without me even clicking in. Whereas let's just say the results below it may not have any of that information. Do you think she's going to click on any of those when these have the super helpful information? No, she's going to click these. So you can achieve these. And this is done through schema. Okay, here's another example. Let's say um, we're, we're searching for tri-tip. We want to make tri-tip at home. And uh, we're looking to make it a certain way. And so we type that in and boom, we see this at the top. Now, what's the likelihood that my eyes are gonna look at this versus even down, down here or below where it's just text? Man, I'm probably gonna be looking at this first and foremost. Well, what does it take to get up here? What, what can you do to get your website up here? And the answer is, you need to add schema to each of your pages. You don't need to, but you can, you get to if you want to. That's also how you end up in this pack right here, right? So these are great examples of really nice looking, um, the results of really nice schema. And yes, those do get, if you can, it's not a guarantee that you're gonna get in here, but you're basically saying, if you enter this schema in, it's it's kind of like throwing your, your name in the ring and saying, hey, we can offer that. We're offering this information. Uh, Google and Yahoo and Bing and other search engines can go, oh, okay, we understand schema. We'll consider it. And I'm not going to say every time you're going to get it, but sometimes you will, especially if you keep trying over and over again with all your pages. And when you get these, yes, you should see a good uptick in um, organic search results traffic to those pages. Okay. So standard search results, and we're almost done here. Rich snippets would be um, you know, we, we got this stuff happening and that's because of schema again. And now we have rich cards. Wow. So th these are called cards and that's also from, uh, adding schema. Okay. Whew. All right. So somehow we did that in 59 minutes. Zach, um, yes. I'm going to pause you for just a moment because I don't want people to see this slide and think we're wrapping up. Yes, we have another 30 we're minutes. Not done yet. <laughs> we have a lot more to cover. What I am going to do, because I know some people do have to leave at the top of the hour, I am going to put a link to the survey in the chat right now. And when you click on that link, it'll open in a new window. You can complete the survey after the webinar. We love to hear what you have to say, and there's a lot more to cover. So thanks for being here. All right. Safe to proceed? Yes, go for it. All right. Um, yeah, so it is helpful if you fill out that survey. So please uh, do that. But we're going to open it up for questions. It sounds like you guys have a lot of questions. I'm so thankful that you're actually awake and engaged. Uh, we're going to try to get through all of the questions. We definitely have some time to do that. Thanks for your patience if you've been uh, waiting to get your question answered for a while. Just to summarize really quick what we covered before we get into those, um, we outlined basic things you should understand about SEO and local SEO in regards to your website. We also covered 15 actionable practical steps that you can take. You don't have to, but you can, and it's they're all probably going to help you. Things to consider, and uh, if you want to, you could kind of use that as an SEO checklist uh, or a board game. If you're a, a dad like me, you can make some kind of nerdy SEO board game for your kids to play. <laughs> Kidding. All right. Um, so now the thing is, you're not going to be, and we're going to get to questions in a second, but you're not going to be able to benefit from these things unless you actually do them, right? <clears throat> so this is a good um, foundation, but you're really, you're really going to want to actually take these things 
test them out, see what's appropriate for your business. Some of these things, you're going to, they're going to be a home run. They're going to be a grand slam. And certain things are going to be like, well, that just seems like a lot of work. That one's not, that one's not for us. That's okay. But, but I don't want you to feel daunted. I just want you to say, well, let's just try these one at a time or a couple at a time and see what starts to move the needle. You don't know what moves the needle though, if you're not measuring your traffic. Okay. So this bullet should be the third, but uh, Google analytics and Google search console, if you don't have those, you know, we just covered 15 steps. This should be like step zero, like before those 15, get these things on your site. They're free. Uh, no, I don't work with Google. I, I mean, I, there's no affiliation or anything like that. This is just a recommendation. You're not paying anything for them. Google analytics will allow you to monitor uh, traffic that comes to your site. Where do they come from? What are they doing? That kind of thing. Uh, and then Google Search Console does a little bit of that, but it also just gives you a really good handshake with Google. And, and it's an opportunity to see um, how your website's doing on search engines. Is it being crawled? Is it being indexed? In other words, are your pages showing up in the search engine results pages? If not, why not? Um, are there major glaring issues? I mean, these two things, if there's one thing you're going to walk out of here from, if you haven't already done this, you, you know, it would be this, but highly recommended. Okay. So um, let's get to the questions. If you have any questions, um, you don't have to hold your hand up like that. You don't have to have a blazer on. You can just um, drop a note to Linda and she will share it. And Zach, I want to encourage people that think the webinar is over that these next 30 minutes of questions, you'll be amazed what you're gonna learn as a result of someone else's question. So um, going back to earlier, some of these you may have addressed as we've gone along, but how do you go about asking other businesses to link to your website? Yeah, that's a great question. And there are different ways to do it. I've seen it done uh, in ways that are, well, I mean, we have a website to be honest with you, Linda. And so we'll get, we'll, we get these emails pretty much every day. And to me, they're a big turnoff if they feel mechanical, like copy paste kind of stuff. Um, so, but our team, we do a lot of SEO stuff. And so there are a couple of ways that we recommend doing it. And one of our favorite ways that we like to do it recently <clears throat> is, oh, uh, here's here are two ways that we like to do it right now. We're literally, we have people on our team doing them this very second, but one would be uh, doing what's called the competitive analysis. So we will use tools and I can mention them if it's helpful. Uh, but we will see what websites are linking back to competitor websites. So we don't really do this for ourselves too much. We do this for our clients. We'll say, okay, um, let's say you are in, let's say you're a shoe store and you are trying to get more backlinks. Uh, well, we're going to see who your closest competitors are and look at all the backlinks that they're getting just to see if we can get any of those backlinks for your website too. Um, so that's called a competitive analysis. It takes a lot of work, but then you can start to go through and see what kind of opportunities are there. A lot of times, to be honest with you, I would say 90% of those backlinks competitors are getting are irrelevant or they would fall into the category of Google said that's a violation of terms of service. So we terms of service that we won't even recommend that. But that last 10% or even 5% uh, can actually be gold. Um, it might be that it's an article that's written that mentions a competitor. And maybe we can reach out to the person that wrote that article and ask, hey, would you consider including our website in that article too? Here's a great place where we think it would be added. So that was one of the two ways, you know, a competitive analysis, but taking it a step further, you know, the second way that I was gonna mention would be not only finding websites like that to ask, but almost doing them a favor. And we don't wanna violate Google's terms of service and, and go like, hey, we'll give you money or hey, we'll." give you a product or, or a service for free. But what we've done recently is we will look at their page and we'll see, hey, are we finding any broken links on their page, for example? And we'll say, um, hey, you know, we love your article. Uh, we did happen to see that this link, you know, you wrote this article three years ago. This link happens to be broken now. Um, and we'll encourage them to consider replacing it with this link and, and say, hey, you know, and kind of wording it in a way where it's like, hey, and not to sound weird or cheesy or anything, but hey, we're, we're helping them and here's one to consider if they're up for it. And if not, that's cool. You know, hey, hopefully we, we help them, we bless them, 
with that, um, letting them know that their page needs to be updated. But we're finding that sometimes they'll go, oh, you know what? Yeah, thanks so much for that. We actually will update it with your link. And uh, we are seeing it even as recent as like today, yesterday, where um, these some of these are really big websites will actually give you a backlink. And no, we didn't pay for it. We didn't violate any um, terms of service for it. So those are just a couple examples or a lot of other ways. But uh, I'd say another really popular one would be um, guest posts. You know, you can write an article on a website that happens to link back to yours or it has a little author bio section at the top or bottom of it that happens to include a link back to your website. Yeah, that, that could be okay too. But, uh, you know, anyways, those are a few ideas. I hope that's helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the first way that you answered that question was very much from your business perspective. So for me, as a solo business owner, I heard what you said, and it's kind of daunting, like, how the heck am I going to do that for the competition? So what would you advise for a solo or a small business owner doesn't have a, have a lot of tech background? What is their best way um, to yeah. do that? To build a competitive analysis like that? So well, I was the, the question was asking about um, how to get businesses to link to your website. Yeah. So, I mean, the, there are a couple of ways. Um, in addition to what I just mentioned, um, I would say, first of all, to even find what websites are linking back to your competitors, um, there are a couple of free tools that you can use. One would be um, there's a company called Moz. They're one of the biggest names in SEO, so M-O-Z. They have a free tool called the Moz Bar. And if you have Google Chrome, it's a little bit clunky, um, but it's free and amazing. You can add that to your browser, go to a competitor's website, turn on the Moz Bar in the corner of your browser, and you can actually click a little link that'll open up all of their backlinks. And so we have the one route would be just clicking on those and looking at them and saying, hey, can I get on any of these? And what would it take? It's, it's always a little bit different to get on them. Sometimes it takes writing them an email and saying, hey, can I write for you guys? Or, hey, would you consider adding a, I mean, you have to do outreach, you know? Um, usually it's not just like filling out a little field and hitting enter. It's, you actually have to talk to somebody and, you know, make conversation. But um, so that's, that's one route. Um, Let's see here. I thought I had a, another one for you um, and I'm forgetting what I was going to say. I'm sorry, Linda, but I hope that's helpful to you. If I think of the other one, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that. Oh, sorry. I did. I did just remember it. Um, so another one would be like, Hey, if, if you don't even have time for that, uh, another one that we've seen is, Hey, let's say you are, you're wanting some backlinks. You opened up uh, a new business in town. You, you know, hey, you need to be climbing the ranks in Google. So you could look to see, here's another one, but look to see what kind of nonprofits are in your area that are taking, they have sponsorship opportunities and maybe they have links back to their sponsors on their website, things like that, you know? Um, so it's really, there's not a one size fits all answer. There's so many different ways, but th those are a handful of ways to find backlinks. Like, okay, Let's see what nonprofits are in, our, are in our area that need sponsors. Well, let's see if they happen to link back to their sponsors. <laughs> so um, I hope that's helpful to you. I mean, I could, we could just sit here and talk about backlinks. It's fun to talk about, but. Oh, the, yeah, there's, let me move on to the next one. Sure. Um, I'd like to know more about the new link standards. Oh yeah. Okay, glad you asked. Thanks for paying attention. Um, I am going to, uh, let's see here. So we've, we've boiled those down uh, to some basic do's and don'ts from these two articles. Um, and so Google changed, um, here, I'm going to open this up, actually. Zach, I'm, I'm kind of anticipating a question is, will you be able to share this document when we share the link to the video? Um, I will share its contents. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So there are a couple of links here and yes, we can share these, but these are important things to keep in mind if you are about to go on some kind of link building rampage. Um, so this little article on Google Search Central is all about what Google calls link schemes. They say, hey, if you're gonna try to manipulate PageRank by doing any of the following, that's no good. You're violating our terms of service. Um, 
And so these are, these are a few examples. Um, so ex exchanging, uh, so buying or selling links that pass page rank, um, excessive link exchanges. I'm not gonna read through all of these. We could spend forever on this, but um, low quality directory or bookmark uh, site links. So these are a dime a dozen. There are so many websites out there where you, hey, you just enter in your website, you get a free backlink. <laughs> Now that was really helpful even two months ago uh, until Google decided, you know what? We have enough of this garbage. We need to start to uh, weed this out. So they're no longer penalizing people for this, but they're no longer gonna pass page rank from low quality directories uh, or bookmark uh, websites, websites that you basically just enter in your website and boom, you have a backlink. Um, here's one that, that we see a lot in our industry uh, links in the footers of templates or various sites, uh, things like that, uh, or forum comments that are stuffed with uh, links back to your website. So, so this is one of the two articles that, that we've found uh, really, really helpful in this regard recently. And then here's the other one, and this just came out just over a month ago. And it's like, hey, here are best practices of building links. Uh, here's thing, here are some things that will work and some things that, that won't work. So again, I'm not going to read this whole article, but I'll pass these on. Um, I'll, I'll include these. And if you guys want them, just hang tight and they'll come with the presentation. If you don't receive it, definitely send out an email, but I think you'll probably get it. So. And the next okay. question is, how do we embed Google Analytics into our website so we know which pages are popular? Um, so that's a great question, and it depends on the kind of website that you have set up. So the majority of websites, not every website, but the majority of them are WordPress sites. Um, if you're one of those people, you can use, excuse me, a plugin called Google Site Kit. That's free. And then you basically install that plugin, and then you follow the prompts. And you can install Google Analytics and Google Search Console, among other things, right there from within your WordPress admin. That's very, very easy. Um, but if you are on another platform, um, you know, I would say check to see if there's something specifically for your platform, especially if it's made by Google. Um, like let's say it's Shopify or let's say it's Squarespace or Wix or whatever. Um, check with your platform. Just li literally, you can do a Google search for, you know, Squarespace, Google Analytics or whatever your platform is, Google Analytics and try to follow Google's instructions or your platform's instructions on doing that. And uh, it's, it's really not too hard, especially if you have a little tiny bit of uh, background in this kind of stuff, so. But analytics.google.com is the website for Google Analytics. And uh, oh, I'm not gonna go there because it's gonna start showing analytics from some of our clients, but. And then Google Search Console, you can literally do a search for that, or it's um, search.google.com slash search hyphen con console. Those are the two things that we definitely recommend adding to your site, so. And the next question is, does a backlink from LinkedIn count for mentions and white papers? Um, yes and no. So that, that would fall in, into, um, so any link that's coming from LinkedIn is going to have what's called a nofollow parameter inside of the link. So I almost want to show you what that means. I don't want to scare you, but if we look at the code behind the link, like I'm doing right now, now they, I'm not going to go digging through this, but if we find, yeah, here's a link right here. It's just a href equals, and then the link, and then here's the text, and then closing the, the link. Now, if it's in here, it says rel equals no follow. That mean, that's basically telling Google and other search engines, you can look at this link, but we're not affiliated with these guys. Don't go passing any link equity to them. Uh, even if we, we, whether we're affiliated with them or not, don't count this. Now, the reason why that exists is if that didn't exist, if there was no no follow parameter, um, black hat SEO people would be dropping backlinks ever. I mean, they already are, 
but there, it would be much, much, much worse. I mean, LinkedIn would be filled with link, 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 link. <laughs> it would just be links everywhere. Um, but people know that, um, okay, if there's, if it says no follow, it's not going to really help us. It might help a tiny bit. No follow, no follow links are, are said to help a tiny bit, but it's no, nothing like having a regular link. So in the example where um, even within the last day or two, we, you know, we, for one of our clients got a backlink from a really, really nice blog in their industry. Um, that's not going to say no follow in the code. That's no, that's going to pass full link juice over to our client. So even that one link is, it's not violating any terms of service and it's going to give a huge boost to the client. So. And the next one, would you recommend pushing people to write reviews on the website first or Google first? Not quite sure how to balance without confusing people. Yeah, no, that's a really, really good question. And I would say wherever you have more of a need. In a lot of situations, I mean, unless you have a large e-commerce store where you need tons and tons of reviews on your website, you probably only need so many current reviews um, or testimonials on your website. So if you're a service-based business, and you might not be, but you, you probably don't need that many. Um, you know, if you have a bunch, great. But a lot of times people are looking at Google and I could, you know, open up a tab and do a search right now and, and you know, pizza shop near me or whatever. And boy, I would say if you are, you know, if you happen to be a pizza shop or whatever your business is and your competitors have way more reviews and ratings there, I would focus on that first. And I would not be afraid to ask them, especially if you know that they had a great experience with you. I wouldn't, I would, I would be a little choosy on when you ask them. I wouldn't ask every single person probably unless every single person is just, you know, blown away by your business and loves you. But hey, if you have a really good uh, interaction with somebody, I would say, hey, um, this might sound silly and feel free to say no, but is there any way you might leave us like a one sentence review on Google? Here's a quick link to that, if, just in case you're up for it. I mean, you could say that or you could email that. Um, in my experience, if I say that and I don't use a, a canned email and I don't sound robotic when I say it, I would say the majority of the time people would say, no problem, I, I'm happy to do it. Um, so it's just kind of remembering to do it and, and just being intentional about it. And again, trying to see what your competitors are doing. And you know, if they, if they have 30 and you have 10, well, let's see if you can do some work there and see if you can pass them up in that, in that category, so. The next question is a follow-up from the person who asked about um, the downtown area when their products in a number of different sites. And the question is, can I use the address of the host business with my business name? That's a really good question. Um, well, I can say this, if you're using the same exact address and they're also using that address, Google is going to ask you about that. Um, you, you may be able to, but I don't know enough specifics about your business and I'm not Google. So I don't know that I can answer it as good as they can. You can reach out to Google My Business Support for a more thorough answer, but I would say a couple of the hurdles that you might need to overcome, which you probably can, um, would be, you know, is that address already in use? Are you going to have to somehow explain that you're both there? Um, they want to know that you're legitimately there. And then um, let's see here. You don't, again, you don't have to have a, a public facing address to be on Google My Business. Um, I, I think it's great if you, are on Google My Business, but if you're using an address and you're not really there, um, and I don't think you're saying this, but to, to somebody that would be in that position, um, I think that would be frowned upon by Google and that you, you would go through a very hard time with them. It would be very frustrating, probably. I've seen that happen. Um, last thing I was going to say on this that comes to mind would be that if you do this, um, they're probably... Uh, almost for sure, they, they would send a card in the mail to that address and ask you as the final step in your setup process online uh, to enter in a very specific set of numbers from that card to make sure that you are who you're saying you are and that you have authority and that you're at that address. Um, so there are some hoops and might be some hurdles, but um, you, you could probably do it. I hope that's helpful. Do you have recommendations for reducing load times on a Squarespace site? Ooh, yeah. 
Um, yeah, now I, I don't wanna give some kind of one size fits all answer other than this. I would go to, um, so you can go to Google PageSpeed Insights and it's a free test. So you can, you can open up a new tab, I'm tempted to do it right now, but I won't. And uh, you can enter in your website address and hit enter. And it'll take a couple of minutes, but they're gonna analyze the heck out of your home. I would start with your homepage. And they're gonna pull up uh, a, every single thing that needed to load. And they're gonna tell you where the problems are. They're gonna tell you if, they, if, if, if that's an acceptable load time in their eyes or not. And, um, and they're gonna you know, tell you what the issues are. So for some people, it's gonna be one thing. For some people, it's gonna be, a, be another. In your situation, you might have images that you never optimize their file size and you're, you have like two meg size images all over the place. Um, or maybe not, you know, maybe to, to another person, we're, we're optimizing someone's website this week and their website's really, really slow. <clears throat> but for them, it's just they're hosted and they're on a bad host. I don't want to say a bad host, but they're on a, um, they're on a host that they're, for some reason, their, their hosting account is just really slow and it's not a cheap one either. So, so now we have to give them the, the proper wording, uh, you know, to get a hold of their host and say, hey, we don't know why, but this is, this is what's going on and our website's going really slow and it's not because of images or, or excessive code or anything like that, but there's an issue with our host. That is, that is another one that we see though. There's another website that we optimized uh, a couple months ago and there it was just a really slow homepage and we had to show them, you know, you guys are kind of trigger happy with the plugins and the add-ons and you're not using like half of them. So we, you know, want to, encourage you to kind of do an audit on the scripts and the plugins and add-ons that you have on your website, because they're all taking more and more and more load time. And you don't need to be eating up all that, all those resources, you know? <laughs> so um, it's different for everybody, but there are some examples for you and uh, a way to find out wh um, what would apply to you, so. And do, do links on social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, help with SEO? Yes and no. Um, so are they, are they good to have? Sure. Um, are they going to get people to your website? Yeah. And do search engines see that? Yeah. Um, but do they pass link equity, like a link from a high quality relevant website, that doesn't have the, the no follow framework? No, not even close. Um, so let's say I, again, I have a shoe store. I don't know why I keep using that example. Maybe somebody in here has a shoe store or something, I don't know. But let's say I have a shoe store and um, I, man, I really need to claim the, the, the rankings in, in Google and don't know what to do. I mean, adding links from those social media pages, that's not gonna probably help me a ton. I mean, th those will get in the search results uh, you know, especially if someone's searching for our company, but I'm trying to get our website higher in the search results. So that's a little bit different. To do that, those backlinks that those profiles are pointing, you know, pointing to our website, yeah, that's not really doing it. But if I, let's say, linked arms with, um, the, you know, the major newspaper in town and there was you know, some kind of article that mentioned us, or maybe, you know, a major blog in our industry um, you know, from some, you know, fairly well-known blogger and they, they have a link to our site. Now we're talking high quality, high relevancy, that's going to move the needle. That's really going to move the needle. And so, um, not to bore you to death, but to get a little bit more specific, um, different search engine optimization companies, there's a couple, few main ones. Um, they have different ways to score your website and they're not Google. They're not perfect. Not, not that Google's perfect, but um, they have their own ideas on, hey, we think we have it pretty much down to a science that should almost mirror what you're seeing in Google. Um, a couple of them would do it, I think, pretty well. Um, at least it's worth a look. Uh, one of them is Moz, M-O-Z. So you can go to their website, moz.com. Another one uh, would be Ahrefs. That's A-H-R-E-F-S.com. And they, they both have different ways to score your website. Uh, here it is right here. Uh, so we're in their admin all the time and no, no affiliation, but we love their tools. We love Moz, we love other companies as well, but they have different ways to score websites. So essentially those scores, 
tell your website's authority. And they're saying, how many, how many websites are pointing back to yours and, and what kind of authority do those websites have? And again, it's not as good as Google, but it's a, it's a decent barometer and it's something to look at and try to improve over time. So, okay, enough of that. And will you be sharing your slide deck when the recording to uh, the webinar recording is shared? Yes, I think that'll be emailed out probably by um, Emily or David at SBDC, if I'm not mistaken. So right, and it, it takes about three days for everything to get pulled together. But the fact that you can share your slide deck makes it a little easier for people who want those follow-up notes. Absolutely, yeah, I'm. I'm the same way I would ask for the slide deck also. So yeah, no problem. And if for some reason you don't get it, that would be uh, that'd be surprising to me, but you know, feel free to reach out, okay? And could you go into what you need to do with your website to maximize keywords and which parts of your website need optimizing the most? Yeah, so I would say to, to give you a good answer on that, I mean, I would, I could speak on that for an hour and a half, no problem, that's its own, its own main pillar of SEO. That sounds like another class. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, but if you, if you want to email us, um, I did just come up with a video article on that. There's different ways to go about doing SEO keyword research. I just wrote a, a very large article on it and did a video with it. And I'm happy to share that with you if you want to reach out. Um, I can give you my contact info where you can just email um, David or Emily at SBDC. And um, so there are different schools of thought and there are different methodologies. Obviously I can't share them all in you know, a minute or two, but um, essentially you want to, um, most of them have a couple things in common. You have a giant list of ideas of keywords for a certain page. You run them through a tool. Um, uh, there's d d paid tools or free tools, a variety of tools. And you vet those ideas and fi figure out what the very best idea is from that list. And then you optimize the page with that one idea. And that, so that one idea is gonna usually be a few words, not just shoe store or some or Nike, <laughs> uh, but a little bit longer than that. Um, maybe, you know, shoe store in Sacramento or, or fashion or, uh, you know, women's shoe store in Reading or, you know, something like that. Um, and figuring out what the very best one is usually using tools and using your brain and then optimizing the page, uh, whatever specific web page on your website needs to be optimized. And so there are five or 10 different things on optimizing your page once you have that chosen keyword or keyword search phrase. Um, but yeah, I would include things like putting it in the title of your website and putting it in the text headings and putting it in the meta description, which you can't even see here. Um, and then dropping it in in different places on your page. And you know, so there, there are different recommendations on that. And um, so again, I can't cover all that content here. Uh, it's just too too much to try to explain, but maybe maybe we'll do another class on that if you want. Or if you want more information, you can feel free to reach out and um, I can I can send you a couple links or something like that if you'd like. So and Zach, I did put Emily's email address in the in the chat. Um, one last question before you wrap up is what was the score company after Moz? Was it HR reps? Yeah, so um, HREFs, so it's A-H-R-E-F-S. And um, I would open this up, but it's gonna take, you, take us right into our admin account and it's gonna show some uh, private information for our clients, so I can't do that. Plus we're almost out of time, so. But uh, yeah, whether you call them HREFs or A-HREFs, uh, it's kind of a joke within the company of how do you actually say their name? But yeah, they're a great company. They're one of our favorites uh, for sure. They do a really nice job. It's not perfect, but it's very good. So. so Zach, we are at the end. I don't, can you go to your ending slide so people can see yes. how to get in touch with us? Yes. Um, okay. Um, so if you want to get a hold of me personally, um, you could reach out to me at Zach, that's Z-A-C-K at bartoninteractive.com. Uh, you can email me or you can call me at this number and you'll have this information when we pass the slides out. Um, but if you just want information on SBDC in general, Linda, I don't want to steal your thunder. Were you going to go through this slide or do you want me to?
No, if you could talk to it and let people know what it's like to meet with an advisor and that, yeah. by the way, that it doesn't cost anything because your tax dollars has, have already paid for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, SBDC is great. In fact, I am, um, Linda and I are both advisors with the, with the uh, Shasta Cascade SBDC um, that has an office in downtown Reading. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, you can definitely reach out. And we are more than happy to help you. And we won't do the work for you, but we will partner with you. Uh, it's, it's no cost because your tax dollars already pay for it. We're kind of like an extension of the SBA. So it's uh, kind of like a, a, would you say government funded entity? And uh, really it's kind of a team of advisors that are here to help you with different things with your business. So whether it's SEO or whether it's, just trying to figure out if you need a certain kind of loan or you need to figure out how to use QuickBooks. We, we cover quite a bit of territory, but these are a bunch of different ways to get a hold of us. Um, you can call the office here. You can email Emily here. You probably have already seen her email. Um, and this is the Shasta SBDC website. And if you're not in the Reading area, no problem at all. Um, in the United States, as long as you're in the United States, there's probably an SBDC near you and um oh additionally yeah these are social media pages for the the reading spdc so things like this webinar recording and other ones can be found here so that's why it is i think it's worth following these um, because you can get that information you can uh, kind of be privy to um if you know we're we're like i said we're we link arms with the sba and so a lot of times if things happen in the SBA, we are very quick to share that information. You know, like the, the idle loan comes out. Okay, we're gonna tell you about it. We're gonna, we can even help you with the paperwork if you want to. We won't do it for you, but we will walk you through every stinking step, you know? So I would say these are a good idea if you want to follow us on social media, or if, you, if you're like, hey, I could use help right now. Um, we can literally walk you through things for free. We can give you, it's, no cost, no obligation advisory services. So feel free to reach out using any of these hundred ways to get a hold of us, right? Here. <laughs> and so. Zach, I know we're a couple minutes over time, but I just want to draw people's attention to the link I put in the chat for the survey. It is so important for us to show our funders what you think of us. So please complete that survey. We love to hear what we can do better to better serve you. If there are other classes that you'd like to see as webinars, we'd love to know that. And Zach, I'll give you the last word as we wrap up. Yeah, no, that's, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, like I said, if there's anything, if you don't get the materials, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah, again, if you don't mind filling out that survey, that really helps us a lot. But thank you guys so much for attending. I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, I think that's it for now. Until next time.